Uh, afternoon everybody, um, just a quick update on what's been happening up here, as I say I'm back up in the loft again and uh, what I'm going to try and do today and into tomorrow is try and get rid of some of these ceilings um, you know the light box that I built the other week um, I've had some quite good results uh, as I say, I suppose uh, all the newcomers to um, who subscribed over the last couple of weeks, I just say, say thank you and uh, welcome. Uh, just in case you're wondering about the crutch, I did manage to break my leg in a couple of places last year, but uh, hopefully it's not restricting some too much. I'm uh, starting to get back on my feet again. I'm um, still in plaster, but uh, I'll get this soon. Anyway, this is the, um, the box I built a couple of weeks ago. Uh, fully lined, and the idea of this being that. Uh, when you're in the house, if you have your growing stuff on, in the house, and by all means, I'm going to sell, make yourself a light box. And the idea of this is the sun's going to hit that straight through, and come back on your plants, and you're going to get a much better growth in your plant. Nice and short, nice and steady, not too leggy. And that's just what you want. Uh, it's just over a week ago now that I planted a couple of trail ceilings just to show you what's going to happen. Well, there we are. That's just over a week. And there's no heat up here. It's... Uh, it's also on about the 50-55 mark, no extra heat, it's the heat that comes from upstairs into the loft here and uh, it just shows you the growth rate of them tomato plants. Now what I'll do with them this week, I'll put them up into, uh, into single cells and I'll just let them grow on for another couple of weeks and I'll take them up the elephant in a cold greenhouse and I'll show you the effects what it will have on them. Uh, as I say, I don't sow my tomatoes till around about um, March time, early March, but plenty of time. Uh, just for the, for the time being, what I want to do is to come up here and uh, but there we are. If you remember, I showed you how to do the labelia in rows. And uh, when I, why I put them in rows, like, that's they're much easier to prick off. Which, um, if you follow through the um, the growing season of the, uh, the bedding plants, we'll show you exactly how we'll go on. But uh, there we have two, four, five beautiful rows of young labelia coming up. Now, my only job to do now is to, uh, and by the way, these have had no water whatsoever for a fortnight. Uh, they got well soaked in the trees before I sow the seed, and uh, all I'm going to get now is a spray. And uh, you know what I like to use, don't you? What's the old chamomile tea? So chamomile tea, it's got some great properties in it. It's antifungal, so you don't have to use any chemicals on your plants. And I always like to wait until my seedlings break surface. Uh, remember when I saw these, all these had is a bit of uh, perlite put over them, just in the in the rows, seeds in, sprayed, a bit of perlite on the top. The perlite's only to help the seeds to anchor itself to the compost. And as you can see, they're growing away really well there now. So all they'll need is just an, another light spraying the chamomile tea all over the seedlings. And you can now go down into the greenhouse at, at home where the temperature is a little bit cooler. As I say, I like to grow my plants nice and steady, nice and slow. I don't like to rush them at all. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this downstairs because I've just made up another batch of chamomile. And what I do is I put it in a jug, just a tea bag. In fact, I might have myself a pot while I'm down there. Um, been that stressed out the last few weeks, not being able to get any work done. Uh, and maybe it's made me feel a bit better. But... Um, that's what I like to do. I like to put just a tea bag in a glass jug overnight, boiling water, and uh, you've got a, a litre mixture to run a litre pot. That's all just plain chamomile tea and spray all the seedlings and just watch the benefits. Absolutely fantastic. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to downstairs, fill that up, and I'll get what's on the greenhouse. Uh, I have managed to get the shields today. The wife took us down in the taxi just for a bit of fresh air because it's been absolutely beautiful here in the northeast. Cool, but uh, nice. And uh, I managed to find some seed for, for Dean Hood down at Blythe. He was trying to get his seed down there, but unfortunately the world was had run out. And uh, as I say, these are my favourite flowers. And a lot of people don't know about them. And uh, it's from River Daisy. So if you're growing baskets this year, that's the seed you want. They're absolutely fantastic for the price. 25p a packet, and you get over 170 seed in there. Now I'll sow them exactly the same way as I sowed the Liberia, just in rows and trays. And then when it comes to printing off time, to 
put them in a single cell trace. I'll show you how it works. But they uh, they're in a post in the morning, mate. So that's them out the way, as I say. Tomorrow's there. Although all you can go down says in the greenhouse. So what we'll do, we'll pop in the greenhouse now, we'll take my spray down, get it topped up with some nice uh, fresh chamomile tea, and uh, we'll have a look around the greenhouse, okay? Right, well, here we are, back down again. <coughs> it's getting a <coughs> excuse me, it's getting a, getting a little bit there, uh, cramped down here now. Uh, the aim tomorrow is to do a good sort out down here, and uh, any of the spare stuff I've got lying around, I'm going to try and get the allotment where it's, as I say, it's a little bit cooler up there. But the sun just went down here in the northeast, but it's been absolutely beautiful. A bit cold, but the sun's been marvellous. Been a really nice day. Uh, what I did manage to get through the week, if you go back a couple of weeks ago when I, when I sowed my giant Cornish cabbage uh, in the multi trays, and of course they all sprouted lovely. Some were getting a bit too big, but I managed to chill them off and get them brought back down and get the uh, size I'm quite happy with. And uh, there's the same plants here. They've been potted up in the, in the small six centimetre pots, but uh, they'll be fantastic. They'll go up the allotment tomorrow. Nice cool greenhouse, and no heat whatsoever. You know me, I hate the to try and give my plants too much uh, too much heat. Um, a lot of the stuff I've got down here, just in there, just under the cell trays, you know the plastic cell trays, and uh, I put these in only a fortnight ago, and there we are, they're through there now, and of course these are busy lizards. Um, why I like to start with a lot of these plants, uh, the basket plants, is because they take a long growing season, um, so I like to try and get them in as early as I can. Uh, end of January, beginning of February, you know me, <coughs> just in gentle heat, and just let them gently come away. Uh, I don't like giving too much heat at all, because uh, I don't, I don't want to end up with leggy plants. And uh, putting a strain on the plant, forcing the cell up, I just like to go nice and steady. There's, there's another tree I just sowed last week, if you remember. I put these in, after finishing the geraniums, already they're popping their way through. So these have had nothing. All they had was a drink of water in the in the bottom of the tree last week. So what they, what I'm going to do now is get these a good soaking with chamomile tea. They've just just broke the surface, so I think that's about the perfect time to give them a, give them a good spraying. There's plenty of their seedlings in here. The geraniums are doing fine. Yeah, they were brought down the other week. The first ones are sowed. These are the second ones, and they are all on the way up. So all they're going to need now, I've got this spray handy. There's a good soaking of chamomile tea, and that uh, that fixes them. As I say, it's uh, I've used chamomile tea for years now. It's uh, it's a good antifungal, and all it's doing is giving the giving the seedlings a little bit of protection um, from the elements. But uh, if you do like me, if you followed me over the, over the last couple of videos, um, good compost, <coughs> good clean trees, good seed, and. Uh, as I say, you should be okay. And once they come through, give them a drink of chamomile tea. As I say, I don't like using chemicals, so this is perfect. This is going, just going to keep them, keep any uh, bugs or um, mildews or funguses off them. There shouldn't be any down in the greenhouse because I like to give it a good clean out at the back end of the year. It's just uh, a little bit chilly in here with the door open, but uh, me, me camera stand, maybe it's next year when I get myself a new greenhouse built. I'll be able to get a proper set up and uh, some new um, some new gear. Right. Onions. Lots of people asking on the net about onions. There really is no hurry. If you want to try growing your own onions, fine. They're great. They're a great crop to grow from seed. Um, if you remember, I grew two sets of onions. Uh, the Billy Lamb, I put them in single trays here over here. They're growing away fine. I have to have a few seed left over and I plant them in a pot just the same as what the yields at Craig ones are. Now they're going to be potted up. Um, but the single fact is, uh, a, lot of, a lot of the big show p showmen put theirs up from the crook stage. Now uh, what I did with my billy lamp, I, I potted them up from the crook stage, and there they are in single cell pots, a bit of fresh compost, they're standing up nice and strong, and they're more or less just the same as what we single cell sold ones are. At the moment I've seen no difference in them. So I'm there. Uh, 
I'm quite happy to use the plot on uh, with the uh, with the way I grow. But uh, as I say, you can sow them now, sow them in pots, or sow them in single cell trays. You can get some good seed online. Um, Yelta Craig, uh, Kelsey is another good one. You can sow them now, and you'll get a uh, you'll get a, a lovely onion by the back end of the year. Just um, if you're judging the people online now, they've got massive onions, massive freaks. As I said before, these are the show guys. They're grown for the shows, so they've got to, they've got to start them off really early, October, November, uh, into December, and they've got the full gear. They've got all the lights, they've got all the heating going, um, and that's the way they grow theirs, and that's how they get so big. So um, don't um, don't worry about that. If you if you want to sow a few onions, by all means, get them sown now, um, just in gentle heat. You don't need much heat for them. Um, as I say, I start mine off in here, and at the moment. It's 55 in here. Now I had to turn the light off because, as I say, I get I get a bit of um, a bit of burn on the head <laughs> when I uh, when I've got that heater on. Also, in the afternoon, I'm west facing here, uh, south facing, but in the west I get the sunshine. So I come down with a aim and turn the turn the light off because I do get a little bit of heat from the light, and so the temperatures rock it up to 60, 65, which I don't like. I just like to keep it on about the 50, 55 mark. So that's all it is there now. So I wanted to get this door shut pretty quick. Once I get this video finished, um, put my little heater on, my little heater is bumping away there, and I'm quite happy with that. Just a little electric one. Um, as I say, pot leeks, well, if you want to try some pot leeks, they're an easy crop to grow. You don't have to grow them in as big as pot as this. Uh, the reason I put mine in there for is because they're a long growing in their vegetable. I start mine off in the January, back in the January, early February, and there they are now. They're just the same as the onions are. But by the time May up north here, when we plant ours out, they'll be a foot high. And the idea of putting them in a big pot is that you get a big root from the leeks, you'll probably end up with pencil thick roots, a nice thick leek with a good root system on. And uh, but I'll show you all that in another video of when we start planting them out. But for the time being, we're only in the second week in February and they have broke the surface just nice. And we'll get another soaking of chamomile tea this afternoon before we go back upstairs. And uh, that'll keep them quite happy. Um, as I say, the leeks, the onions, we've got another tray full there. And these are show leeks. Uh, I've got some seed from a good friend of mine, so what I'll do with these next week, I'll start putting some of these up in the single cups. And uh, they'll just sit there. If I get a nice leek from them, fair enough, one will go in for seed. And of course, tomorrow I'm hoping to get up the allotment, get a lift up off my brother again. And uh, that is one of the jobs I must do them or I must address me, me leaks for the um, for seedlings, the ones I put away for seed. They'll need a good spray, so I'm hoping to make up a um, make up a garlic spray. Or oh, I've got a little bit of rhubarb left in there, I can make a bit of rhubarb spray up and they give them a good blast for that. But uh, if you're interested in my sprays, by all means check out a couple of the last videos. Uh, one thing I must do tomorrow is I must check on my tea. And that's the um, that's the nettle tea in the big barrels. Uh, what I hope to start next week is to start making some brews up. And what I like to do is uh, mix my nettle tea, the juice of it, with some nice clear water, and I'll start feeding the cabbages. I might even start feeding some of the leeks on it next week. Uh, some of the bigger ones in there. They're grown quite well. I'm, I'm well pleased with these. These are the uh, Paul Rochester leeks. Um, they're in two litre pots at the moment, and of course, there's the leeks. The roots are coming through there now, so I'm going to make a decision tomorrow. Uh, whether to leave them down here or take them up the allotment where I've got a bit more room. Um, what I'll definitely have to do is to make a mix up for them. Of course, my own compost. Uh, I'll have a, I'll do a little video tomorrow and I'll, um, I'll show you how we make our compost. So homemade compost, brilliant stuff. We used it for years. Um, we'll get some grand results from it. So what I think, what I'm thinking about doing is putting these, the, the big leaks into, uh, into two gallon buckets. Um, because the way I look at it now, these aren't going to go in the trench till the middle of May, uh, the middle of April, sorry, under the under the polytunnel. So we're about, what, what two, six, what, eight weeks away, so two months. They're never going to sit in there for two months, so I'm going to put them out in the bigger buckets, and I might start giving them just a, a light feeding of, um, of nettle juice, just in the bottom of the pots in the trays, and see how the plant soaks it up and see how they'll go on. I don't like feeding too early. Um, as most of the growers will tell you, if you get a trench rate, get all your feeds and your trench that you need, you shouldn't have to feed. Um, 
the only thing they do is to spray and keep clear the pests. Um, I don't really have much bother with mine because, uh, as I say, I can go across with the uh, I can give them a chamomile boost now, and then next week I can give a, make a, a garlic spray up, or um, a bit of soapy water, and then give them a spray with that, and that'll just keep them nice and clean. I don't, if, if I can get away with it, I don't like using any chemicals at all. But uh, no, I'm really pleased with them. They're not as big as yours, Paul, yet, but uh, <laughs> no doubt this is the first year I've tried them, and uh, I'm, re I'm really pleased with the way they're looking. Um, if you go back to when, um, when they were bought and brought over, I had just getting taken into hospital that week. That was in the um, beginning of um, November when I had my accidents. And uh, really, they haven't been looked after at all. Um, I was in hospital for a week, and it was a fortnight before I could even get downstairs here with the way my leg was all strapped up, plastered up. So the wife was just coming down, doing a bit of watering. No, no check was kept on the heat or anything, so they really had to just struggle on by themselves, in which they did do. By the time I did get out and see them, uh, they were a bit of a sorry state, but uh, no doubt uh, they're a good leak and they pulled herself back. I'm pleased with them. So I've got 15 here to do, so we'll get that done next week. Um, the last video, the shallots again. Now, uh, the company I, I bought them from, I got straight back on the phone with them, and uh, the lady I spoke to, they had quite a few problems with um, the Jumo shallots. And quite a few people phoning in about them. So they sent me out uh, a packet of golden gourmet, um, which I wasn't too pleased about, but hey ho, that's, that's life. Um, I managed to save two, four, five, six of the jumbo, and that's them there in little pots. But I'll keep them, I'll let them go to seed, and then I'll get myself a nice, uh, get myself some nice seed for next year. Uh, and that'll start me off. I'm quite happy with them. But uh, yeah, at the moment, everything's, um, everything's doing fine. All I've got to do now is go around, give everything a light spray, um, check the ceilings that's coming through. In fact, I've just noticed there ones, that's the Swan River Daisy, and the, uh, the Cineraria, and they're poking their noses through already. That's only after a week. So it just goes to show you, don't be in any hurry to put your, and put your, your ceilings in and put them in any heat. 50-55 um, is fine. If you're just sowing bedding, if you're just sowing leeks and onions just for the home, that's all you want. You just want gently heat. You don't want anything too hot. But here, people putting all sorts of propagators and stuff like that on. Fine. If they want to bring their crops up a lot earlier, that's fine. But uh, the hard part is to find space for them when they bring them out their propagators and put them in their cool greenhouses, their cool tunnels, and uh, the temperatures are just completely different. And that's when you start getting your problems. The plants get a shock, and uh, nine times out of ten they don't recover. So uh, just bear with us, just, uh, just go easy. There's, uh, there's still plenty of time, it's, it's only the second week of, uh, of February. I'm just looking outside there, my bulbs are all popping through there. Uh, no flowers yet, so it's, you know, it's just telling you, spring's uh, a few weeks away yet, so uh, don't be in, in such a hurry to start soon. Um, what I will do tomorrow, I'll take my camera with us, I meant to do it last week, but um, as I say, I'm still trying to get get myself pulled around and get uh, get walking properly. Um, I'm back to the hospital this Wednesday and hopefully the um, the surgeon's going to allow us to have a, a full cast you know, or, a, or a walking boot. So that will make a massive difference to us. At least I'll be able to walk around without the aid of... Well, I'll still be using crutches for a good few months yet. But uh, it'll give us a bit more um, confidence in walking on me on the old feet again. But uh, I'll get there, slowly and surely. And it's just the same with your plants. Don't rush them. Just let them, let them grow nice and slowly. Your aim is to get a nice plant, short plant, sturdy plant, and then when it comes to pricking off into multi-cell trees, we'll go through that in a couple of weeks' time because uh, the way these geraniums and that are grown and the lobelia are coming through, I'm looking at transplanting around about the middle of March, which is only three, four weeks away. But what I like to do is get all my compost ready, get all that made, and what I'll do tomorrow, I'll take you through it again, um, how we'll make our homemade composts. Um, we'll get a couple of bagfuls made up up the allotment, and of course we've got a big cement mixer up there because we use uh, we use that much. But what I'll do is I'll go through the the mixes in smaller quantities, and so you can, if you want to, you can make the same mix as what we do, and uh, you can try that on your bed and plants. It works out a, a lot cheaper than just using multi-purpose compost. As I say, when I'm when I'm doing all my seeds, so that's the only thing I do: use multi-purpose compost and good 
put a handful of shelf sand in every mix. I always like my mix to be free drain because of water. Everything from down below. All my trays got water from down below. The only time they get any water on the top is when I spray them. And that's only every couple of weeks with the chamomile juice. So there we are. That's um, that's what up to date down here in the greenhouse. Um, as I say, welcome to, uh, to all your new subscribers. I will uh, get around to uh, the posting. Uh, just one more thing. My Facebook channel. Um, if you want to come over to our, to our channel, it's uh, Jeff Foreman on the plot, and that's on my Facebook channel. So any new any new subscribers, uh, you want to have a bit of input with us, that's what we do. We've got our uh, a weekly Facebook channel that we can have chats every night, uh, up to date info. There's quite a, quite a lot of lads up on the plot up there um, that you get involved and uh, post pics and whatnot and have a bit of chat on. So if you want to come across, just uh, send us a request. No problem, and we'll get you on Jeff Foreman on the plot, and that's on my Facebook page. But uh, for the time being, I'm going to get this video crack on, get this online, and uh, as I say once again, thanks everybody. Keep watching, and uh, just be patient. As I say, we've got a few more weeks to go yet before we get out of the woods. We had snow here the other day up northeast, just a few flurries through the night. It's going to be cold again tonight. Um, temperatures here have probably dropped down to 45 in here. And that's for the heater on, but no way. I'm, I'm quite happy with that. Through the night and then through the day, 50, 55, nice steady temperature. If the sun does get out, get the vent open. Don't be afraid to let the fresh air in. The only, the only weird thing I will say is if you've got decent sized plants, make sure they don't get a draft. Uh, put a bit of a um, bubble wrap on all mine so the wind, if I don't let the air through, it gets filtered through. Um, what, that's what you don't want, is you don't draft on your plants, but by all means, open your door slightly, open your vent, let a bit of fresh air, don't let it get too hot. Don't think it's in, oh, it's getting really warm, the plants are over it. They don't. Just let them grow nice and slowly, and that way you'll have a nice strong plant. Come planting out time. Um, nine times out of ten, I don't, I don't do much hardening enough. All I've got to do is shift mine from the greenhouse to the polytunnel, where the nets are up, and then that, they're lovely and strong. Come uh, middle of May, and then quite easy to go straight out in the garden without any hard enough and cool frames or um, any place in the garden where you've got a bit of shelter you know, if you haven't got a cool frame but uh, there's ways of me means to get around that but I'll, I'll show you all in the next coming videos <coughs> because we're going to be really busy in the next couple of weeks we're going to start sowing um, what annual seed <coughs> the likes of our marigolds <coughs> The soft plants, <coughs> the dahlias, uh, the dahlia seed, we can sow all them in March because, believe you me, they really start growing strong and they, they can get quite a size when they're in the single pots. So what you do want to be sitting with a pot bong plant in the little pots and you waiting for the, for the temperatures to rise or for the frost to pass before you get them planted out. Plant them with me, same time, or wherever you are in the country, if, you, if you're down south a little bit earlier, and we'll show you how we grew on, and we'll get a nice, strong, healthy plant, timed just nice for planting out. It can be daunting at times because the weather can change in a flick of a switch, but um, well, that's life, you know, that's a garden. You'll, uh, you get used to that day by day and year by year as you go on. But um, anyway, I think I've said me bit for the day. I'm going to finish off spraying these, and then I'm going to get myself upstairs, get this video online, and then tomorrow I'll get up the allotment and I'll give you an update. Uh, beginning of the week on what we're doing up there. Okay, so for the time being, thanks again, and uh, and enjoy. Webinar.